In this video, we're going to take a look at unwrapping uh, the retopo we did in a previous video. So if you haven't seen it, you might want to go watch it. And that's doing a retopo for sort of a game solution here. The idea being is it's low res. There aren't layers of clothes. It's, uh, it's all sort of modeled together in one. I have kept the boots separate, however, at this point. And so we're going to take a look at what it takes to do this. I'm going to start with the boots. Um, and oh, the other thing we're also going to do is make sure that we pack these together, sort of assuming all of the material, uh, you know, part of the character would all be in one, maybe all the skin would be in another. I haven't got all the pieces uh, set up for this, so we're going to do the boots um, and the uh, and the and basically, which is the the body part of it, the the clothing essentially. I haven't got the gloves or the helmet or anything ready, but they probably would be get packed into the same part. So if you look at the boots, they're symmetrical. I have a symmetry modifier on it. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to work below the symmetry modifier. I'm really lazy. I don't want to unwrap two sets of boots. I want to unwrap um, just one set, and you'll see what what happens here so I'm gonna to go to the unwrap modifier I've got it sitting in uh, uh, just you know in my tools here and you can see it's it's just you know from the uh, retopo point of it it is just giving me this sort of top down one of the things I always do again I select everything and I go and put a quick planar map on it reason to do that is I want to make sure that there's no seams anywhere there shouldn't be seams that I'm not aware of. You know, you miss this one little seam somewhere and you do all this work and you can't figure out why your normal map's not working properly or something. You got this little piece left over. So this one's gonna be pretty easy. Into edge mode, to in the keyboard, I'm gonna uh, select uh, around where the, um, you know, sort of the rubber part would be. It makes, it seems to make some pretty good sense. In the edit uh, UVs window, right break, uh, just right click and click break and it's gonna break it off. And you see a green line down there now. I'm going to assume, and I'm just going to isolate this real fast and isolate this out. I'm going to assume that if I um, cut this all the way up the back now, this top half, you know, so I've got these two elements now. So I've got this top element. If I cut it up the back, I might be able to flatten it out pretty good. Uh, so we're going to find out. So here's a neat trick. So if I double click on the edge loop here, you're seeing it's it's wrapping around the entire boot. Might be where I need to go with this, but we're going to try it anyways. So instead of double clicking here in the viewport, I'm going to click once here and just pick one of those edges in this element because I can see it. And I want to hit the loop button down here, loop UV. And what you're going to notice is the loop UV in the UV window stops at the edges of the islands. So this is different than doing it here where it would continue and follow the geometry loop all the way around. Instead, the looping in the UV edit window stops at the UV uh, islands. So you can see it's stopped here. So I'm just going to right click and say break. I'm going to go ahead and select all the polygons again now. I'm going to go to my peel mode. I'm going to turn off, detach, and avoid overlap because uh, I don't like what they do generally. I like them just being off. And it seems to have unwrapped them pretty good. So let's also make sure that we've got a checker pattern on there. And we can take a look at this. I'm going to turn off the uh, sort of the high quality mode and just go to standard. And you can see it's that's pretty good. So I'm going to grab both of them and just scale them. Um, I can put the pack or just scale. Um, and I'm just going to scale them together. It really doesn't matter at this point. So you can see that it is looking pretty good. I don't see anything overly stretched. Now, one way to check that as well is to scale it um, up a whole bunch at this point. And you can see there's just more, um, you know, squares to look at. And it looks pretty good. That looks pretty darn clean. I don't think I'm going to worry about trying to split it into two pieces. There's a boot done. So now the other boot uh, is the is the trick. So now that I've done this one, one of the things I tell everybody, always, 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 always make sure that you are collapsing your unwrap modifiers into the stack. Don't leave them because I constantly I see people then go down below edit poly that makes them change and it buggers their UVs and they blame Max for having buggered UVs. That's because you're doing stuff before the unwrap modifiers worked. So if you've got it done, just go ahead and collapse it and you can say collapse to if you want and it'll collapse it into it and now it has UVs on it. So now that there's UVs on here, it's actually symmetried them over to the other side. So let's like take a look at what the UVs look like above symmetry now and you'll notice there they are 
and both boots are on top one another the only problem here is is one of the sets is inside out so if we go take a look at these elements there is one element for the uh, boot and there's the other element and now if we go and say select inverted polygons you'll see that one half is inverted well that's pretty easy you just hit the mirror button and done it's no longer inverted so i can say select uh overlapping select inverted nothing happens so that's the easiest way to unwrap don't unwrap both just unwrap one and then just split apart your uv so you could go ahead and pack them at this point but the problem is is i really don't want to uh, i'm going to be shoving them off to the side because we also have the body that we want to work on here and i'm just going to go ahead and collapse this again now to my poly and the other one we want to do is this um, i'll try and see if i can isolate it here there it is there we're going to unwrap this one as well and see how this is and this is just I decided to keep the bow at the top as a separate element, uh, as a separate piece I'm going to put in there. So we're going to check that out. Again, same thing, um, below symmetry. We're just going to go ahead and unwrap, and I'll get this done and come back. So for this one, I broke it up in just grabbing the edge loops along the edges of them and, and doing an unwrap. Some of these loop ones, I decided to do both sides because it might unwrap really strange if I just try to do one cut down them. Um, you know, in these ones I did, I probably could have done one on those, but I did them both up so, uh, the either side as well. But it gave me this. So when you, you can do a little bit of cleanup at this point, just to make packing uh, easier later, what I'll do is I'll, uh, you know, straighten them out. I'm not going to worry about whether they overlap, but at least then they're all straight for me. Um, you know, when I come back to it and, you know, it just, it, it'll sort of make more sense once you start to, uh, dealing with uh, packing algorithms and stuff. But again, I'm gonna take all these and I'm gonna shove those down or down into this corner down here for uh, packing later. And now we can go back to uh, you know working on the rest. So we've got that one put in there. I'm going to collapse this down and convert to poly and I'm gonna go drop in the unwrap. And of course we wanna pick all of the other half. So I'm gonna turn off, ignore back facing pick all of these that's that half there and I'm going to flip those over and now I know that those are unpacked with the way they should be as well so I can get uh, texture on these two if I want or I'm going, going to one two certainly uh, at the end I'm just going to show all those again and oh we should just collapse that down and I'm going to pick the other pieces I want to work on and just isolate those and so now for the body so the body is going to be a little uh, harder to understand and, and be able to uh, you know unwrap it flat but it's the same process first off I like grabbing everything so I'm just going to go control a in here and I'm just going to make sure that there is you know uh, uh, just strictly a, a straight up um, you know planar map on it so the only seams I'm seeing are going to be in the opening areas that are opened and you know I don't have any you know sort of surprises along the way so I'm going to isolate that again so I've got this one and now we're going to start breaking this up so I think there's going to be some logical breakup spots that we can really see right off the bat so into edge mode and then there's going to be edge loops around the sleeves. So that makes sense if I break this up. Now, if you notice, I'm not doing this with a symmetry modifier, and that is because, um, you know, this body, if you follow the retopo, and as you can see, isn't symmetrical. So I don't want to just try and mirror it over to the other side. It's not really going to work too well. So I want to break those sleeves off. We're going to need to break them up to be able to uh, flatten them out properly. Um, but at least now we've got sleeves broken off. So I like to just sort of try and grab some chunks that are real easy to, to separate to start with. So I can go around underneath the, um, and, and break the, the, bot, the uh, pants off, sorry. And so that's gonna be along this line somewhere. And then if you see, it actually goes down into a coat tail sort of the uh, the underlying, um, I guess it's a, a petticoat, I guess you might call it, and it goes down underneath. So I'm going to have to go in and make sure I pick those real carefully and break that off 
straight along underneath here. I might be able to do an edge loop. Nope, it's doing some kind of crazy looping thing. So I'm going to have to do it by hand. Take the, the hard way here. But now that I've got that, I should be able to break that piece. Right click, break, and I'll always just keep checking these things. Yep, I've broken that off. And now you can, as you separate these elements, it's a lot easier to sort of to start, you know, understanding it from there. So I'm going to go ahead and break all these elements off and then, you know, we'll come back. We'll talk from there. So now that I've broken them up, you can see that I have these these chunks to work with. So this is, you know, making your life easier, not trying to, you know, uh, you know, do it sort of piece by piece. It's it's the same pro same sort of idea of a process as I take when, you know, uh, doing the retopo. It's like work on the big things and then get down to the small stuff, as opposed to you know trying to deal with it all at once. The one thing I didn't do yet, and I should go and do now is uh, go and break off the um, the bottom of the petticoat here because it's actually a separate piece so let me just go cut that free of the rest of it should be along i think this line and again sometimes you can just double click and i'm not um because uh, it might um it might not get me exactly what i want to i think i want to go there i want to go there so i want to break that off and again just check and make sure that it is yep and so now I can think about flattening some of these elements and pieces, you know, what's what's uh, you know, what's it going to be easy to flatten these things out? And, you know, you could try now, but I don't think it's going to work so well on some of them, but I could go and do a peel on it. And you're going to see this one does some really crazy stuff because it really can't flatten too well. Uh, we're going to have to probably break it down a little bit more into a front and back. So, again, you know, in the edge mode. I'm going to grab, you know, a couple edge loops here. And again, I'll just, you know, what I'll do it, I'll do it with the uh, loop um, in the editor to make it a little better, that one, and a loop there. And you can see that it seems to have gone all the way up and over. I'm not sure if that's broken off properly. It looks like it is. So I'm not sure why that looped. But it is. So I'm going to grab both of these and then loop and see if I can get a front and back off there. But you can see it's going all the way around. I think it's seeing that as, yeah, it's seeing. So I don't want to break those. You got to check before you go and start breaking things and make sure you're not breaking off stuff that you shouldn't be, uh, or else you'll end up with, you know, seams everywhere and just a complete mess. So that looks pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and break that. And then we can see what that looks like being peeled again. And you're going to see now we've got this front and back piece, but we might want to break this in half right down the center. And again, you could you could do it, um, you know, a couple different ways. Um, you could grab all the polygons and break them off, or you could do that and break them off. So I'm just going to do that. And so now back to our peel and see what we get. And so we should get these nice flat pieces now. So that's produced nice, easy, flat piece. If I check my texture pattern or, you know, checkerboard pattern, those should be nice and clean. So then we've got to do it to the pants. Now, of course, the pants are going to run into, you know, a couple problems here. And we could we could try it a couple of ways. One is uh, splitting it down the sides. So I could grab it down the side and down the side on the other side and split it front to back and again we'll do the loop in the editor window break back to my polygon select those and see if we get a good peel and it seems to have kept it as all one piece still and that probably makes sense because we'd have to break it all the way down all the way around up this part as well so let's go ahead and break that um, through the center as well. So double click on that and that looks about right. Break and again let's try this uh, with a peel and now we've got two halves again front and back. So that might be an easy way to do it. They're peeling off really uh, simply and often you have a seam down pair of pants anyways so you know it might look fine. So that's an easy way you could have you know, split them down the center in the middle, um, you know, around the crotch area, that would have worked too. So now what we need to do is just go around and break them off and make sure that they're kind of peeling out flat and not getting any kind of crazy warping back on themselves where we've forgotten something. So I'm going to go around and do that on each of the pieces as well. 
So here's my solution then at this point. You know, we're going to see if uh, we have anything overlapping. I've peeled them all, um, you know, just made sure they're all sort of spread apart so we don't get any errors when we do our, our selection tests. I broke off the inside of the sleeve. I've capped this off. If you remember in the uh, uh, retopo, I talked about them. You, you just kind of paint, paint the end of the sleeve black so the arm disappears into blackness. You don't want to leave it a hole, so I've just left these as little dots here. We can pack those into a little corner somewhere and give them a black pixel, and uh, it really won't uh, make any difference, uh, you know, what's going on here. Now, for the, um, uh, the around the collar here of the, uh, I guess this is part of the petticoat underneath, I think it is. Um, so this big collar, I've had a bro. I broke off the bottom piece, essentially the piece that goes around behind. And because the way it was modeled, it cuts across and down and then follows the seam that I originally broke it. So it's broken that whole piece off up top here. And that's this element here. And then so this front piece is then also just, you know, been able to be flattened out. It looks pretty good, but we wouldn't do a test next to make sure we don't have anything crashing into each other. So we go to tools or sorry, select inverted polygons and see what's inverted now we're going to get a whole bunch of places where we end up with inverted polygons and you're going to go that doesn't look inverted but if you go to the vertex uh, and and pick your vertices here you'll notice that there's a vertex on this line and it's coming back on itself that tells me there's a hidden edge loop that's going across probably from this side to this side and if all i do is just pull it out straight on both sides go back to my selection again and overlapping and it doesn't show us overlapping there so we want to just make sure there's no overlapping verts uh, just inverted polygons and again you'll get it with inverted polygons and you can see it here again where this edge loop um, you know this is gone kind of back on itself and there's this you know little triangle there so that looks like it may have worked just fine. So probably just doing that will get rid of it. Inverted. And there you go. We're ready. I believe we're ready. Oh, no, we've got another one in here. And here it is definitely overlapping. So here you can see it's crisscrossed over each other, even though we've run the, um, uh, the, the peel on it. It's just the polygons are so odd here that it's, it's having a little bit of difficulty. So we're gonna try and remember that when we do our packing and our straightening out to try and make sure that we get rid of that. We can just start, you know, tweak the verts a little bit at the end to make sure everything's good. So one of the things I'll do now is I'll just scale them all. So at least the scale, or you could just sort of do a quick random pack on them, you know, and sort of pack them together. Sometimes I don't like doing that because uh, you, uh, you know, you end up with this pack that rotates them around or puts them in places you don't want them to be uh, and it's hard to understand which is which again so now we want to get to packing them and pack them all together so we've got the boots and the clothing that we're going to pack all together so again i'm going to collapse that down convert to edible poly i'm just going to go ahead and with that selected i'm going to grab my boot and all these laces stuff i'll, I'll go and add in but i'll generally do that last because there are all these tiny little pieces so we'll we'll do it again so i'm just going to go in and uh, isolate those unwrap uvw and there's all our unwraps so far so if i go and grab all these and uh, we'll grab all the verts grab all the polygons so that's everything that's been unwrapped there's all our seams and show the checkerboard pattern and for whatever reason it doesn't show up on all of them so what i do is i go and create a checkerboard pattern so that's real easy i'm just going to make a quick material just a physical one take the roughness all the way to the top and OSL um, and then we go into I believe texture and we find checker and then with a the checker um, I don't want them to be um, white because it's real pain to see I wish the checkerboards weren't white but I make them a couple of gray tones we'll call it that and we'll apply it to both those objects and you'll see that we've got them, you know, at a size. Again, I'm just going to drop in um, maps, OSL, 
coordinates and I'll use a UV transform. You could probably also do it uh, right in here and set the scale. So you could do it either way. Um, I'm just gonna move that out of the way so we can see what we're doing and you won't be able to see it. You know what, I'm just gonna adjust the scale. Although I think it's gonna have to get really small. Yeah, no, I won't. I'm gonna try and adjust it in the tiling here. So I'm gonna take the tiling to 20 by 20. I'll show you in a second. That looks pretty good. So I just turned up the tiling on the UV uh, 20 by 20 because the scale value was going to end up at some tiny little point value and be a pain. So there you go. Tiled it out. Now I can really see what's, you know, what's what. Now, if you notice that the checker patterns aren't the same on both of these. Now, if I hit the scale on them, it's not going to scale them the same because they're different elements. They, it, it won't, you know, go across or sorry, different objects in this case, it won't work on these. So what I'm going to do is just do it by manually by grabbing, you know, one and scaling it to be the same size as the other. So that's pretty good there. And then we can go ahead and pack these and you can try custom pack. Now I'm going to go uh, to tools, pack UVs, and we're not going to, we're going to turn off rescale clusters because we've scaled them to be the size relative to each other and see what happens and I can pack them and it's gonna jam them into that space. Um, it's not that bad, you know, it, it fills the space pretty good and you could get away with it, but we could make this a lot better by doing it manually and, and you know, coming up with sort of a cleaner approach to, to packing it. And so what I'll do is I'll generally start with the main pieces. I know all those fit into this area relatively tightly at this point because I got them to pack together. Um, but now I can go ahead and start grabbing pieces and elements and see if I can get them to fit together in some sort of logical fashion and use the um, rotate and the, and just pack them in here. And again, if you've you know followed some of my other ones, my other tutorials on doing this, we're going to be able to stretch them into place. So I won't even mind too much if they overlap a little tiny bit. You know, if they have a, a little bit of overlap to them. So I'm going to jam some of these in here. And see what I can get to. So I'll be back in a second. Okay, so you can see that I've packed them all together a little bit more logically now. And one of the things I'm trying to make sure I do is keep things like the right on the right and the left on the left. Now I've got boots here, so I've got them on the correct sides. The, the uh, bottoms I just kind of jammed down there. They look comfortable in there, you know. Uh, but I've got the right sleeve, the end of the right sleeve, and the other side, of course, these. So I make sure that the, the right way around, it just, when you look at your texture map at some point, it's, you know, you have to be able to look at it and, and make it make some sense. Now you're going to see that I've got a pile overlap going on here. And, you know, you might say to yourself, well, well, that's no good. Well, what we can do then is hit the quick peel and again, make sure that you're not the quick peel, sorry, the uh, peel mode. You want to make sure detach and overlap are off. So I'm going to hit those and then turn off the element and go down to vertex mode. And you're going to see now that we've got our pins on our pieces. So if we go ahead and grab all of our pieces when we do that, sorry, I should just grab them all first. Yeah, let's grab them all as polygons first and just turn the mode on. Should have done that before and do the same. Now we can see them all. We can sit there and start peeling them together. So, you know, maybe these pants, we could get them to fit in a little bit better. Every peel gets two um, sort of pinned points. And then the rest is like a cloth simulation in between. And we have the auto pin on. So we can grab some of these and we can just try peeling them a little bit differently and see if we can get them to fit in a little bit better you know, and take up a little less space. Now we want to make sure that we're not, you know, completely destroying the integrity of the unwrap and that we're not getting really crazy unwrap solutions from it. Now you see, I've added one on this corner, that corner, is this one really necessary anymore? So let's just get rid of that. And again, you just have to sort of touch it again to see if it'll, uh, you know, to, sorry, to get that sort of the cloth to um, uh, calculate. So I don't think I'm going to need this one again, get rid of them, okay? If you don't get rid of them, it's gonna be really difficult to follow. And you can see I just made an extra one by mistake again. So I'm gonna get rid of that one and put that in there. 
and so as few as possible but I should be able to stretch this into place pretty good and again making sure that you can see that I'm not doing any serious damage to the UVs um, I was rescaling them a little bit too much there but you can see now I've, I've created more space um, so I could pack things probably a little tighter um, I'm going to grab the other corner here and just pull that a little bit and now I'm going to go around and do that to the rest of them. I'm just going to adjust them and see if I can get them to, you know, off of each other and maybe even get a little bit of room, uh, you know, a little more space or, you know, be able to scale some out. And so the idea being here is I want to use up as much of the space as possible with the biggest pieces that I'm going to need. So this piece could probably even grow bigger now. If I move this one up, I can start shoving them around and I can make them fit a little bit better and I'm not going to waste as much space. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now and we'll see where I get. Okay, I'm here at the moment. Now I've got those uh, ties I've got to add. So same thing. I've got these, uh, these pieces packed in there pretty good. I'm going to go editable poly. And now we just need to go back and also grab those ties that um, I wanted to add in and there. And so now back to UV unwrap. And I've got my unwrap window, if you notice, set to auto open. I don't know if you, anybody knows this, but uh, you got open UV editor. Uh, under options, you can say always bring up the UV editor and, and save it as your um, default settings. And uh, it just, you know, makes your life easy here. So here's all those pieces and they're all packed in there now too. I'm just going to go grab all those elements. Um, but you can see obviously uh, from a scale perspective, they're probably scaled completely differently. So let's just go and add that material to those and make sure that it's got material. So you can see it's using just way more space than it should. So I'm going to go ahead and scale those down. You, you know what, I'm just going to use the scale tool so I don't stretch them at all. And, you know, give them some space. But what you can see now is I should be able to jam these in just about anywhere in between and use up some of those spaces that I've got. So I'm just going to take these now and just start cramming them around between them. That looks like it's probably enough UV space for them. And so I'm going to distribute them right and left. Uh, so again, so I have some idea as to which ones are which if I ever have, happen to have to go look. So I'm just going to pile these in here and I'll be back in a minute. Okay, so now let's check and make sure we've done things uh, correctly. We don't have any overlapping uh, and whatnot. So I'm going to go to select inverted polygons. Immediately I've got some issue areas and those are those areas um, and I've gone and, and played with them more. So we've got some problem areas. So I'm just going to go in and fix uh, a couple of those to begin with. So I'm going to go to my select and just make sure it doesn't, it probably wouldn't make any difference whatsoever because they're really not overlapping some of these. Um, but I'm really picky and just like to make sure I, I'm not seeing them as being overlapping. So I'm just stepping back and forth with between my, uh, edge view and and so again okay here's one of the here's that spot where they're they're kind of crammed in there and we need to move them over a little bit so i'm just going to grab these and you can see they're just overlapping this one um, this edge so that gets them out of there and then it's just you know check and make sure we don't have any overlapping it looks strange this hasn't been picked up so um, let's go check that select overlapping polygons no and it's funny because it's actually overlapping there and it is not getting picked up so I'm just gonna make sure myself that that is not overlapping so not sure why it's not seeing that but there you go we should now have um, you know a good unwrap it's it's pretty good it's you know um, you know, working well. Something to note though, you don't want to go and turn on peel mode again now because we collapse the UV set. This is one of the issues with the UVs being, uh, you know, stored this way. When you collapse them down, you lose the, the options you had in this window. And if you re, uh, you know, peeled them again right now, if you turn on peel mode, it'll actually repin them in two places because it doesn't, it can't see that they've ever been peeled before and you'll lose any of those edits you made. And it looks like I'm over the line here too. didn't see that. So I'm just going to pull that in a little bit and make sure I am in in all the spots. So one of the other things you can do is try and pack them tighter. And I don't think it's going to happen here, but if you're, if you've got a pile of space, one of the things you can do is start jamming them into a corner. And if you can get yourself an extra row 
and column basically around it. That means you pack them tighter and then you can scale them all back out again. And then you keep packing them into the corner, not scaling them into the corner, packing them into the corner to fill up the space. So it's an interesting technique to be able to do it. But there you go. There's packed UVs. Uh, they're packed together. We've got three different pieces all um, packing together here. And, um, you know, this should work pretty well for when we start doing projections, which I hope to be able to get to as well at some point. And we'll see if our normal maps are working well.